Hi, I'm Nathan Cole of natesviolin.com, and today we're going to look at bow changes. How you can feel like you've got one never-ending bow. So you may be asking, why are we in ancient Greece? That is a good question. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Let's first take a look at the slow movement of the Mendelssohn Concerto and pay attention to its bow changes. So like so much of Mendelssohn's music, a beautiful singing line like that, we don't want it chopped up by bow changes, right? When that happens, it's so obvious to everybody. That's because there's a real problem with bow changes. The bow has to end at some point, right? And when it does, when it gets close to the end, the sound can start to die, and then the next bow invariably sounds like it has an accent can happen to the frog as well. But most often happens at the tip because the sound naturally gets weaker there. And we don't want that. So, ancient Greece. Told you I'd get to it pretty quickly. There was a philosopher named Zeno, and he came up with a lot of paradoxes. And these were new ways of thinking, looking at the world. You might even call them silly. Uh, some people at the time thought they were very silly. But there's a great one about the tortoise and Achilles. I'm going to tell you a little bit how it works, then we're going to watch a short cartoon. Um, but Zeno proposed that if Achilles and the tortoise had a foot race, that Achilles could never catch up to the tortoise, even though he was much quicker. In fact, uh, he even said, let's say that Achilles is 10 times as fast as the tortoise. And so we're going to set them both on the track and Achilles is going to give the tortoise a giant head start. He's going to put him actually pretty close to the end. So, gun goes off, or a, whatever they used back then, and uh, Achilles pretty quickly catches up to the tortoise, to where the tortoise started. But, in that short amount of time, the tortoise has been able to go a little distance. Achilles quickly closes that gap, but in that time, the tortoise has been able to go just a little bit more, Achilles closes the gap, the tortoise has gone a little bit more, so you see Achilles can never catch the tortoise. And that was the paradox. So let's, let's take a look actually at how that might look on a real track. And so here we are at our track, we're going to wait for our two protagonists. There's Achilles, waiting for the tortoise to appear shortly, there he is. Now we'll see the tortoise gets a big head start. And when the gun goes off, Achilles is going to quickly catch up, but the tortoise has gone Halfway down, there's Achilles catching up, tortoise, now bit by bit till they get closer and closer to the end of the track. Now, as amazing as that animation was, what does it have to do with us, our bow changes, the Mendelssohn Concerto? I want you to imagine yourself as Achilles, and the tortoise that you're trying to catch up to is going to be your best sound, and it's residing somewhere further down the bow. So I've even outfitted my bow with a couple of flags, and let's go in for a closer look. So on the left, you'll see yourself, Achilles, where you are in the bow right now, and over to the right, further down a down bow, is your best sound. So, as you travel down the bow, ah, this flag doesn't want to move. Hopefully you can bow more smoothly than that. You're finally going to catch up to your best sound, or so you think. Because during that time, your best sound has moved halfway down the bow again. So now you're dealing in this area of the bow. So stay there for a little bit. See how great a sound you can get in that quarter of the bow. Now, as you reach the three-quarter point, your best sound has moved again. 
that much closer to the tip. What can you do with an eighth of the bow? Not bad, not bad. Let's move them again. Now the flags don't want to stay up. Finally, we're going to reach that very last inch of the bow. I'm actually going to move the flags back out of the way. So what can you do with one last inch of the bow? You can actually make quite a bit of sound there. And when you do, you're going to start feeling something in your arm. And I'd like for that something to be what I call opening the door. A lot of times when people want sound near the tip of the bow, you'll see them, maybe they'll raise up the bow arm, maybe they'll even have kind of an angle to their wrist, try to get some leverage. You may see them separate their first finger from the rest of them, try to bear down on the bow. None of that is necessary and most of it is counterproductive, it can even result in injury eventually. What I like to think of is opening a door with a doorknob. So here I've got my hand on the doorknob. When I turn, you'll see the whole forearm, including the wrist and the hand, rotate together. We'll call that pronating and supinating. So if I put the bow in my hand and do that, you'll see it all rotates together. So of course, when the violin's up and the bow makes contact with the string, the bow can no longer go any lower, even if I start rotating my forearm. So you won't see the forearm rotation, but it is happening and that energy instead is going into the string. It's bending the bow stick and it's giving weight or pressure into the string and that's how you do it. At the frog, of course, it's the reverse. You can think of closing a door. Tip, open. Some of you may uh, open and close doors, reverse. That's all right with me, as long as you know which way to rotate. Um, so, once I have that motion in mind, I can practice that with the notes of the Mendelssohn. So the very first two notes... I'll go back and forth just with that very last inch of bow. And all the time I'm feeling that rotation there that's giving me the proper weight into the string. Then when I start backing up the bow a little bit and use an eighth or a quarter of it, I'm still looking for that feeling right at the very end of the bow. And that's the paradox. As I work my way toward my best sound, I feel like the bow is never really gonna end. And then finally, when I'm hearing my best sound, the bow changes direction. And I can practice all the bow changes that way, whether they're at the tip or the frog. And that's how you can make a never-ending bow and a never-ending line in Mendelssohn and all the great vocal composers. So, I'd love to see you over at natesviolin.com. I've got a ton more articles. I've got more videos. And uh, while you're there, make sure you sign up uh, so that I can deliver the latest videos and tips and tricks to you in your email inbox. So I hope to see you there soon at natesviolin.com.